Hi there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on adrenal fatigue and brain function. So one of the most common symptoms I see in my clinic is patients come to me, they're fatigued, and they're also feeling tired and like they have some brain fog. They can't quite think clearly, memory's not sharp, and I've, I've already done a couple of videos on um, brain function with gluten and brain function with other types of foods affecting that and cognition. We're going to go a little bit more into how your adrenal glands specifically affect that. So what are your adrenal glands? Well, they sit right on top of your kidneys, right around the mid portion of your back, right around T12 uh, spine, it's process. And your adrenal glands, we have two of them, and there's two primary layers for all concerns. We have our cortex, even though it's called the cortex, it's really the outside layer, okay, cortex, and that's gonna produce a couple different hormones. That's gonna produce cortisol, so cortex, cortisol, kinda makes sense. And cortisol is a glucocorticosteroid. So it helps manage glucose and your energy. And then corticosteroid, it's your natural cortisone. It's your natural anti-inflammatory. So a couple of signs of adrenal fatigue are energy and not being able to manage your inflammation, being overly sore, overly stiff, overly in pain. So again, cortisol there. One of the next things that we see is our mineral corticoids or aldosterone. Now, aldosterone plays a big effect on our blood pressure. So one of the biggest symptoms that we see in a lot of patients that have adrenal fatigue is they develop orthostatic hypotension. So what that is, if you bend over and you stand up fast, you may get dizzy or you may see some stars. Or if you're lying down and you get up fast, then you may feel a little dizzy, little stars. So again, for a woman, that may be less than 100 over... 80 blood pressure and for a man it may be less than 110 over 80 and this is a common symptom i see especially in females and when we add in an anemia layer to it then we definitely see we see iron-based anemia along with the adrenal fatigue um, the orthostatic hypotension symptoms are going to be uh, very common and hypotension is important without enough hypotension we're not going to be able to drive blood flow up to the brain so we have these arteries that sit right on the side of our necks here. These are called our carotid arteries. They feed blood right up into our brain, kind of like a garden hose. And without enough pressure, we're not going to perfuse or flow that blood up to our brain. So think about um, maybe going in your backyard and you have the hose and the water's coming out. And if you want to squirt that hose harder and farther, you take your thumb and you cover the end of it. What you're doing is you're increasing pressure so you can shoot that water farther. Well, the same thing happens in your brain. So imagine when you have adrenal fatigue, instead of taking the hose like this, you're opening it up and you're making it bigger. When that hose gets bigger, you're not gonna be able to perfuse your brain. So let's look what's happening when that's occurring. We have decreased blood pressure. Again, this is gonna be commonly caused by adrenal fatigue. Very, very common. And again, with adrenal fatigue, we're also gonna see fatigue along with that. Decreased blood pressure, that's gonna take the pressure and make it bigger, make the hose head bigger, so the hose waters and the fallout, it's not gonna squirt out, not enough perfusion, not enough flow to our brain, and that's gonna cause decreased cognitive function. So this one study I'll put here in below the um, detailed information below the video, what they found was when they increased exercise and when they gave anti-blood pressure medication, so medications that actually increase blood pressure, they saw an increase in cognitive function. So that's pretty cool. The solution isn't to go out there and to take anti-blood pressure medications, vasopressants or sympathomimetic medications. That's not the solution. That's just treating the symptoms. The solution is to actually go and get your adrenals looked at do a salivary cortisol rhythm test, spit into a vial four times throughout the day, and then you can see exactly what level of adrenal fatigue you're in. But again, like I already alluded to, three strategies they found in the study were the medications. That's not really a, a good one. That's just symptomatic. Exercise was helpful. We have to be careful, though, when we exercise with adrenal fatigue. Again, three questions you have to ask yourself when you're exercising with adrenal fatigue is, do you feel energized after the exercise? That's one. Two, do you feel like 10 to 15 minutes later you could do the exercise again mentally or emotionally? And then three, three to four hours later or that next morning, how do you feel? Do you feel wiped out? Do you feel drained? Or do you feel okay? People have adrenal fatigue. They're 
they're already in that sympathetic fight or flight state. So the more exercise you do, the more you're pushing that fight or flight state. You want to make sure that you can heal from it. And if you answer those yes to those three questions positively, then the exercise is probably okay. Again, salt consumption is important. Aldosterone's main job is to hold on to salt. So when we have decreased aldosterone, that's going to make it harder for our body to hold on to salt. And when I say salt, I'm referring to a high quality sea salt. And my favorite brands of sea salt are going to be real salt, Celtic sea salt, or pink Himalayan sea salt. And again, think of this as a broad spectrum mineral support. And when you have low aldosterone, it's going to cause you to pee out your minerals. So getting on some high quality adrenal support, even licorice is really important. Licorice, very similar to a uh, mineral cortical a mineral corticoid, which is similar to aldosterone, allows you to hold on to your salt levels. And again, regarding adrenal support, licorice is a really good one. Again, not all licorice is created equal. Um, sometimes prednisolone and DHEA can be excellent. Various herbs and adaptogens can be awesome. And it depends on what level of adrenal fatigue you have, whether you have normal levels or whether you're stage one, where your cortisol is jumping above 42 units for the day. Whether you're at stage two, where your cortisol is up and down throughout the day, and whether you're at stage three, where you're lower and flatter and your cortisol is beneath 23 units. So it really is dependent. But again, if you have brain fog, if your cognitive function isn't there, and you have orthostatic hypotension, you stand up, you feel a little dizzy, there's a good chance your adrenal fatigue, your adrenal fatigue is contributing to that. So salt, decent exercise, get your adrenals assessed and treated. Again, this is Dr. Justin here. If you're suffering from these problems, check below the video and find out ways you can get a hold of me. Feel free and subscribe for more great information coming your way. Thanks. Take care.